Hey guys and welcome back to this brand new video. Today I'm going to do the part 2 of the Photoshop beginner tutorial. And as I said in the previous video, I'm going to do all of these tools one by one. In the previous video I did this one, which is the move tool. And if I'm following the order, we're going to this one, which is the rectangle marquee tool. I'm going to show you exactly what this tool is for today. In any case, all of the most basic stuff and uh, even advanced already. I mean, this tool isn't really much more than that I'm going to explain you today. So let's jump right in. I'm going to go to file, new. Uh, title, like I said, previous video doesn't really matter. You can title it right now or at the end of the video. I prefer at the end, but it's really up to you what you want. Then width and height, uh, we're going to do the one in my case, in any case for the video. So these are all thumbnails and videos in this size. Be sure it's on pixels. Same here. Resolution is on 300 nowadays. It's a high resolution. It works perfectly. It's on pixels also slash inch for this one. This one. Color RBG. 16 bit doesn't really matter it's uh, as long as this is rbg that's already really really important uh i i choose to do background white it doesn't really matter for the rest so i'm going to click okay now as you can see we have this item already you know this is a pretty basic one it could be a thumbnail or a video it's the same size as this anyway i'm gonna not actually unlock the background right now don't really need to i'm gonna actually place linked an image because it will be way easier to um to show this with an item or an image so th i chose this one it's pretty nice I can do a lot of things with this tool uh, that are pretty clear that I'm going to explain in this one. So I actually wanted to size this a bit. So I'm going to place this right over here. Because it doesn't really cover the whole item, you know. So I'm going to do this. And be sure it's the same thing. I'm going to click this. And it's the same size right now. Okay, well, let's do this, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. Let's see if I can place it in the middle a little bit. Let's see. Like the bridge is in the middle. That would be nice. Uh, yeah, like this, I guess, would be in the middle, something like this. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to place it like this. It looks nice. But yeah, as you can see, it is in the middle right now. It looks pretty nice. It's a good image. And I'm going to actually show you what to do with this tool. So basically, first of all, if you take this and you drag it out, you're going to see or a square or rectangle. In any case, it's a four corner shape. And it just basically allows you to select a certain part of your uh, image. For example, I'm going to show you the middle. Uh, yeah, like this. It also shows you, as you just saw, the little blue line. It showed up. There it is. See if I can catch it again. Oh, come on. Yes. There it is. Yes, there we go. And that means basically that you have, that you're pretty much in the middle, you know, that both sides are the same size. And as you can see now, it's perfectly in the middle. So I'm going to click OK. I have now selected... Um, the perfect yeah spot like it's it's just right in the middle right now of the eye in the image basically so now to start off with actually i wanted to show you the other things that I allow because this is the main one this allows you to make an, uh, another uh what is it called uh yeah selection because this is basically a selection but as you do this one you can add one inside so you can actually change it a little bit you know you can make it bigger as you can see you can make all kinds of shapes it's re that isn't really important but I mean, the main thing will be, and the main thing is that I show these things to you. So I'm actually going to show you this too. This, I believe you can cut through one image. Yeah, there you go. See, you can like split it into little or big pieces. So that's pretty nice. You could also use that. Um, but there are other ways too, to actually take parts of images and, and use like filters on it, something. But I'm going to do that in another video. But as you can see, this is pretty nice. This is basically for everything you want to use on squares and everything and rectangles. You can you can use this tool really to to edit anything. By the way, if you made a couple of these um, like selections and you wanted to remove them without doing uh, like uh, Control Alt Z, you want to go here up to selection and go to deselect, and that way you can just deselect everything you just made and that messed up a little bit. But for the actually more interesting part of this tool, I'm going to show you that you can like really combine this well with um, filters and everything. So let me just select the photo here. I'm going to go to filter and Gaussian blur is already up here. But in, ca in case you want to know where it is, you go under blur and Gaussian blur. And as you can see, I can blur this like the middle uh, without actually yeah touching the, 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 the sides next to it. So I can do this. I can uh, click OK. So can I really see good what I did? That looks pretty nice. You know, it's, it's an idea. As you can see here, the transition and down here, the transition from HD image to yeah, blurry middle. You can use it in some specific, like if you want to put a text here, it will go way easier now because you blur the part. And then also if you go down here on Gaussian Blur, you double click it, and you can actually change it. Don't add another Gaussian Blur filter because you will double the things and then it, it's not good. Just use one, you know, 
No, with uh, I mean by that I mean that if you're gonna do another time filter Gaussian blur now because you don't find it blurry enough, you're gonna use double double triple Gaussian blur and you don't want that. So you want to click on the Gaussian blur effect again, so that you can actually change on how much it is. So I'm gonna say six, and that once it becomes six, it's pretty blurry. As you can see. Now you can really put a text or anything you want. And from distance, how does that look? And you don't really see it from distance. I mean. I used this, as I said in previous videos, for some time to look from distance how people would see it as a thumbnail, for example. But now, yes, you can see, yeah, you can, you, go, you can go your own way. I believe if you put like 20 or something, it will be way different. As you can see, that actually <laughs> takes part of it. As you can see it from distance now, it's, it's actually changed a bit. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you something more interesting even that you can also do. So I'm going to put it at, what, what I'm going to put, uh, at six, uh, let's do six. So it stays pretty clear almost. Um, I want to go back to the selection actually. So I'm going to do Ctrl Alt and I'm going to click Z until I got my selection back. It's easier that way. There we go. My selection is back. So I want to show you a little bit what this tool can do uh, else. It is especially under the uh, select bar. As you can see here, now you can select all. You, you, you just select all. I don't even have to do that. You're basically going to go all the way around this image. It's going to be uh, selected like this. This select, as I said, is if you want to undo something, uh, you know, make something undone or just don't do it at all. You can want to deselect something because, yeah, maybe you didn't want it. Something really interesting what I wanted to show you is inverse. I'm going to click that. As you can see, I can now inverse. And now if I do the blur, filter Gaussian blur, let's do it like that. Why not? Six. As you can see, I did the exact opposite. So now the middle is not blurry, but the sides. And that looks pretty awesome. Oh yeah, you cannot really see good from distance. But as you can see, it looks pretty awesome. And that is also an, an idea on yeah on how to do something. For the rest, um, not really big things that will increase things. You can transform the section. I'm not really done that. Oh okay. Yeah, that is also pretty useful. You can actually change the size if you did if you wanted to change it. You can actually do it like this. And just change it. It's pretty nice. The last thing I wanted to show about this tool that is just really nice and useful is that if you can select again something, like just do something again, be sure that I like it to, to be in the middle or something, um, you can delete it. So basically if I do backspace right now or if I want to delete something, it says this, not complete, your request have been a smart object, it's not directly editable. That is okay because that means that I didn't open it immediately, you know. I open a project and I have this background. If I would done this open the image, I could directly edit it, but now I can't. So how you do that? How can you actually edit any image in the project? Well, I'm going to go here, right click on this image, because it's, in this case it's this image. I'm going to click on rasterize layer. That basically means that you can make the, uh, the layer apart, that you can make it unique and that you can actually change it and uh, make changes to the image. So I'm going to rasterize it. And now if I do backspace, it immediately disappears. Now, as, as I said, uh, for example, you want to do the opposite. As I said, you go here to go to inverse and do backspace. And then you only have the middle left. And then you can make it black, for example, f like uh, like in a movie, you know. Let's add a little movie effect. Don't know why, I just wanted to do it. Let's be lazy here, do a color overlay. Let's do a black one. There you can see. They have a little, a little movie look, I guess. This select. But yeah, that is everything you um, you really needed to know about this tool. As you can see, it's a pretty useful tool. I sometimes use it in a banner to like, you know, this is the banner, imagine. And I do this, I put a selection like this. And then uh, I don't entirely blur it. As I said, you have to wait until the middle. There we go. And I blur this, for example. And this remains and this. And on some banners, that looks really good. So I definitely recommend this tool in some cases. Um, I think you will find out yourself in what cases, depending on your project, of course. Uh, I personally still think that it's a pretty useful tool, yeah. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy working with it. As you can see, it's pretty easy. Showed you really important parts of this tool. The most important, actually. But yeah, I'm going to continue to do these tools one by one. Next one is going to be this one, then this one. You know, I'm going to go through the list, all of them. And uh, in the end, you know, you will be able to use all of these tools and also the filters that I use because next to these tools, you will mainly use um, select, as I said in this one, filter uh, and uh, this one. But these adjustments are basically the filter of this one. But I, I that, that you will understand that through these videos. I definitely um, advise you to watch every single video I make of these tools uh, for right here if you really want to become really much better in Photoshop. Uh, I'm not saying I'm the most advanced Photoshopper out there, but I, I, I definitely know what I'm doing. 
So be sure to, uh, yeah, to follow all of my videos if you really want to know how to actually just use Photoshop like it's a normal thing, you know. Don't have to think too much about everything you do. With that all said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Uh, subscribing to my channel would also be really nice. We really appreciate that. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.